Hey guys, and welcome to today's task. For today's task, we are going to be resurfacing these flower beds. I put them in about four years ago, and every other year I've been sanding them and resurfacing them. They need a good, solid resurface this year. So we're gonna sand them down and stain them once again with some Australian oil stain. Now, I don't care what brand of stain you buy. I think they're all maybe relative, but I like the Australian oil being in it. It's a good penetrating oil and it really protects the wood from the elements. And these are exposed to the elements all year round. A few of the tools that we're gonna use on this is a small paint tray and a small roller. I like the heavier nap rollers because it gets in the wood a little bit better. I'm gonna sand them down with 120 grit. I think 80 is a little bit too rough and I think 220 is obviously way too fine. So 120 will be just fine for us. And then also, you're gonna want some rubber gloves when you're staining. It is messy, sticky, and nasty. If you can find them in any store, I was really surprised I found these, you'll want rubber gloves to cover your hands with. Let's get started. Now we are ready to sand. As you can see, this part sanded really heavily and this part is sanded heavily, but this part isn't. And that's because the wood is actually cup shaped. If you were to look at this piece of wood on end, you would see the grains going like this. And if I would have been smart when I built the box, I would have actually put those curved grains facing downwards so that they'll cup downwards because wood will always do that, especially when it's exposed to the elements. Shoulda, coulda, woulda, oh well. Now we are just gonna keep sanding this down and you just gotta work into that cupping shape a little bit. These are gonna have to look perfect, but I really do wanna take a good layer off so that they turn out uh, nice. Okay, this bench is completely sanded and you can tell it is like a light tone. We've taken it down to the raw wood. This top part had a lot of peeling, so I had to sand it down a lot more than I wanted to. This wasn't really peeling, so I just did a light sand on it uh, just to get it prepped and ready. Now I wanna show you the next step because we've only been able to do the surface sanding of this bench. When you're sanding with an orbital sander or even a belt sander, all you're gonna be able to do is get this top layer. But you're gonna have a lot of buildup of old years of um, sealing this built into these cracks. And when you seal this and this, this is gonna get another coat and it's gonna look darker. So I do recommend getting a foam pad sander, putting the corner in, and just kind of hitting that lightly a little bit, just so that when you stain this whole thing again, it'll all absorb evenly. And this kind of detail isn't necessarily critical for the longevity of this wood, but if you want it to look even and nice, I recommend going the extra mile. When you're all said and done with it, it really would only add a, a little bit more time to your project and make it look all that much better. So I think the, I don't know, the look that you're going for is definitely in the extra time you put into a project. Everything is sanded, but if you can tell there's dust everywhere. So almost as important as sanding and prepping it is, I guess it's just part of prepping it, is blowing it down as best you can. And I'm gonna spend a good hot minute here blowing this whole thing down, because I don't want any of that dust to be on the wood surface when I go to stain it. It'll just ball up, it won't allow the stain to adhere and penetrate. So we wanna get this as prepped and clean as possible. Now is a great time to see where you've missed with sanding. I actually see that I wanna go a little bit further here, just a little bit on this surface because this gets the most sun and this will actually damage the quickest. If you notice the tops of these boards are what's in the worst shape because they get the most sun exposure. And if you look at the back half of the flower bed, that wood looks like it's untouched on the back side because it's not water or shade that's hard on wood. It is direct sunlight that will chew it to pieces every single time. Guys, we are ready to start staining these garden beds. I'm excited to see how the wood changes and what it's gonna look like. Super fun. I have my paint tray and I have a roller. I do have a spare roller as well, but I like the thicker nap. It just kind of goes on a little bit better. They actually have naps that are specific to staining and that's what you want. I like the throwaway trays because by the time this is all done, this is a disaster and these trays are really pretty cheap. I figure just toss them. Now, when it comes to paint, 
everybody knows you got to shake paint really well but believe it or not there are particulates in this stain that you definitely want throughout all of it and if you don't shake this they'll stay at the bottom and what you get on the top coat and what you get on the bottom coat will be totally different so you need to shake it up very well probably not quite as rigorous as paint but it needs a good thorough shaking for sure ah, good to go i had to get big heavy duty wash gloves because there are zero latex gloves anywhere to be found around where we live so wash gloves it is now i'm ready to do the dishes as well Wow, I can feel the sun heat on there and they are warm already. I do recommend sealing that back up between each fill of your pan, just so that this doesn't start to dry out. It will start drying out and then it gets thick and gummy. Now with our paint tray full, everything cleaned off, we're ready to start staining. It really is a simple process. Yes, I'm going to get all the way down into this area because this is where water and sun and the weed eater hit it and it gets the hardest, I guess, life. <laughs> so we want to definitely hit that and make sure that's protected as well. And I'm going to change my direction on these because there's a lot of grooves there from the weed eater and everything and I want to make sure I get a deep penetration in there. So I change that direction just a little bit to force that in as best we can. The cool part about staining this kind of stuff outside is that it really doesn't have to go on like wipe on, wipe off kind of thing. This is a paint and roll on and you're done system. Whereas if you're like creating a new piece of furniture or something, you need to wipe it on and then wipe it off immediately. This stuff goes on really, really simple and it's really easy. We are ready for coat number two. It has been about 15 minutes since I finished the last coat, but by the time I get back around to wear that last coat, starts and ends it's roughly about 30 to 45 minutes total time so we are ready to start putting more on this and if you can tell it is absorbing it like crazy and if you're wondering how far does a gallon of this stuff go um, usually I can do three coats of each of these two times so I'll do three coats three coats and then maybe not next year but the year after I'll do three more coats again and then we're good to go so for as expensive as this stuff is about 65 bucks a gallon um, getting that much time out of it and usage. Oh, also I did my trailer top with this as well. So I got a lot of square footage out of this um, and it goes a long ways. An excess stain will build up in those crevices. So I just take the roller, stick it in lightly and pull against it, kind of wicks it out of there. The amount of stain you use on the first coat is more than double the amount you'll use on the second coat. And then the third coat, it's even less because you are putting it on and it's drinking it up as fast as it can, it doesn't need to drink as much and it won't absorb as much the second and third coat. So that's why I kind of don't go past three coats of it. It really doesn't go on much deeper or penetrate any further, but that first and second coat and then third coat work perfect. Here is the finished bed with all of the tomatoes planted in it. Here is the unfinished bed. I'm gonna take the rest of the evening and finish this one up, start sanding it, start staining it. It goes pretty quick. If you really calculate the amount of time that I spent uh, working on this, it really wasn't that much time. It's just a matter of dedicating a day and having hopefully good weather. We've got beautiful weather today to do it. 
So I recommend if you've got a balcony that you've been putting off, if you've got flower beds you've been putting off, getting them sanded and stained, go ahead, take the time to do it. You won't regret it. I won't have to do this again for at least two years. So that's kind of the benefit of maintaining it and doing a good job on it um, every once in a while so that you got a few more years of, uh, I don't know, laziness in between that. I guess. Anyway, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And if you guys want to be notified every time I put up new content, which is every Friday, hit that notification bell next to the subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. I will link all of the products that we're using in the description down below. And until then, we'll see you guys next time. Bye guys. Because the sh that's that's what? Why do you have to sand the whole thing? Lincoln, out of that garage. Ow, that hurts. <laughs>